We are sorry to keep people waiting a bit. We are a little late getting out of Brussels today, but it is an honor and a pleasure to be here today. State Secretary Garrison, Colonel Lainus, Lieutenant Colonel French, Ambassador Bergens, and my fellow ambassadors from, uh, from NATO, it's an honor for me to visit Camp Adige to salute the men and women of NATO's armed forces. This camp, which I've just had a quick drive around on this uh, snowy afternoon, it's a model of everything that NATO stands for. And you symbolize the spirit of our alliance, all for one and one for all. Personnel from countries across the alliance serve together. Your presence sends an unmistakable message we are NATO. Many of us, as individuals and nations, working together as one alliance. You embody an important truth that we are much stronger together than we are alone. You will know that you are not alone, that you are part of the largest reinforcement of NATO's collective defense in a generation a reinforcement that includes the deployment of similar multinational battle groups in Estonia, Lithuania, and Poland. On Monday, I will visit Lithuania, where a German-led battle group has been deployed. Croatia, France, the Netherlands, and Norway have provided troops and equipment to support that effort in Lithuania. In Estonia, the United Kingdom is the lead nation for that battle group, with support from Denmark, and Iceland. The United States leads our battle group in Poland, supported by Croatia, Romania, and the United Kingdom. I want to thank all NATO members who are actively supporting these four battle groups. Here in Adige, I want to thank the leaders, military personnel, and citizens of Latvia for your indispensable role in hosting and contributing to this battle group right here in Latvia. I also thank Canada for being the lead nation here and Canada's ambassador to NATO, the permanent representative, Kerry Buck, is joining us here this afternoon. Your presence here testifies to NATO's vital transatlantic bond and by the way, this is Canada's largest troop presence in Europe since the Cold War. In addition, I want to thank Albania Italy, Poland, Slovakia, Slovenia, Spain, and soon the Czech Republic for providing troops and equipment here for this multinational effort. I am again joined here today by the NATO permanent representatives and other senior representatives from each of these countries and so glad that you were able to join me on this trip. So thank you colleagues for being here and showing your support for this important mission. All of the personnel gathered here today represent the solidarity of NATO, an alliance of 29 nations that have united behind a common purpose to protect our nations and our nearly one billion citizens. NATO's commitment to strong deterrence and defense has helped to keep the peace in Europe for nearly 70 years. This deployment follows that proud tradition all military deployments involve challenges and sacrifices, and I know you are here without your families, far away from your friends. I hope that all of you know that your service is very, very much appreciated. Your presence here makes a huge difference. For that, we are deeply, deeply grateful. I thank you all for your service, for helping us to defend our alliance, for helping to deter aggression, and for preserving the liberty and peace of your fellow citizens across this great alliance. Thank you very, very much for your uh, presence here today. Thank you for hosting us. I hope we'll have a few minutes now to uh, have a chat, at least with some of you, and, and get a look at the equipment. Uh, it is an impressive sight, and again, we just drove around the camp, so we got some feel for the scope of this activity. It is really impressive. So 
Just as I wrap up now, I know I have a few words with the press, but I wanted to say thank you again to Latvia for all your efforts in hosting this paddle group here and to all the nations involved, starting with Canada, the lead nation. So thank you colleagues again, look forward to further discussion and uh, at this point I think I'm breaking off for the press. Am I standing here? Uh, we'll take actually a few minutes for questions from media. If you could please state your name and which media outlet you represent. We only have time for a few questions. All right, thank you. I think, first of all, I really like to emphasize the degree to which the presence of uh, the four battle groups here in the Baltic states and in Poland is so impressive because we came out of the Warsaw summit just in uh, July of 2016 with a decision to move forward. But what you see here in this forest, you know, the footprint wasn't, wasn't anything like what we see today. So within a year from the Warsaw summit, these battle groups were certified and ready to go. So that is an impressive sign of how NATO can pull together and work and get something done when it is facing a serious challenge and uh, the threat of aggression. So we have, I think, truly accomplished a lot. And again, I want to give credit for that now. But these battle groups do not stand on their own. Um, a lot of attention now is going into follow-on forces and what else uh, needs to be done, including uh, the very high readiness joint task force. We are looking now at capabilities and troops available uh, for Europe in the numbers of 40,000. So it's not as if these battle groups stand alone. There are a lot of different capabilities uh, that can be brought to bear. And the question of uh, what other capabilities in terms of uh, of air defense, in terms of uh, air policing, in terms of naval presence. All of these are the types of uh, issues that are continually uh, under consideration and development. So I really think, first of all, we need to take credit for what has been accomplished so far, but also to recognize that there is a lot of ongoing work and that these battle groups are not standing alone.